Hey YouTube, in this problem we're going to find the Laplace transform of t times e to the 2t times the cosine of 5t. Okay, so whenever you have an e like this in front of something that you can take the Laplace of, we can take the Laplace of cosine, we, we can use the shifting theorem. So we've got this, we can do just this piece. The issue is we have this t here. That means we're going to have to use one of the derivative formulas. Okay, so solution. Recall that if you have the Laplace transform of t to a power times f of t, and you can compute the Laplace of little f, like if you know how to do it, then this is a useful formula because this is equal to negative 1 to the n times the nth derivative of big F with respect to s, where big F is the Laplace of little f. So if you ever have a t or a t to a power times something that you can take the Laplace of, this is a good formula to use. So we can take the Laplace of this thing. So in our problem, this is going to be our little f. Okay. So basically what we'll do is we'll take the Laplace of little f, right, and that'll give us big F, and then we just take the derivative one time, because in this problem, n is equal to 1. All right, let's go ahead and find the Laplace of little f. It's so the Laplace transform of e to the 2t cosine 5t. Okay, this is equal to, so it turns out that whenever you have an e in front of a function, what you can do is you can drop the e, so we still have cosine 5t, that piece stays, right? And you replace it with a shift, right? Your shift goes from s to s minus 2. It's s minus whatever number is here, okay? You can always do that. This is called the first translation theorem. Now we have to work out the Laplace of cosine. So if you have the Laplace of cosine kt, the formula, the easy way to remember it is cosine has the s, right? So it's s over s squared plus k squared. So in this case, it's s over s squared plus 25, right? 5 squared is 25. And our shift is from s to s minus 2. So this is equal to s minus 2 over, and then here we have s minus 2 squared plus 25. All right, so that's the Laplace of little f. This, this whole thing, this is big F. Now we have to take the derivative of this. And we only have to do it one time, right, because n is equal to 1 in this problem, right? Here's the 1 right here. n is 1, right? So n is equal to 1. All right, so to take the derivative, I guess we have to use the quotient rule. So let's go ahead and do it. So f prime, big F prime of s. So it's the derivative of the top piece, which is 1, right? The derivative of s is 1 times the bottom piece, so s minus 2 squared plus 25, okay? So that's the derivative of the first times the bottom piece, okay, let me just fix my parentheses here, minus the top times the derivative of this bottom piece. So here you just use the chain rule, right? You put the 2 in the front, so you get 2s minus 2. Chain rule, the derivative of s minus 2 is 1, but I won't write it. And then the derivative of 25 is 0. All of this is over the bottom squared. So parentheses, parentheses, s minus 2 squared plus 25. Oh, this is pretty cool. This worked out kind of nice. Um, here we have s minus 2 squared. It's kind of nice, kind of kind of nice problem. Uh, and then s minus 2, s minus 2 is another s minus 2 squared. We still have the 25, too. I probably should write that, plus 25 and then minus 2, and then s minus 2 squared. All over, all over, parentheses, parentheses, s minus 2 squared plus 25. So all we did there in that step, oh, and this, is, this piece here is squared. I forgot to put the 2 there. Good save. Right, you have to square the bottom piece when you use the uh, quotient rule. Let's just check this really quickly. So we took the derivative of the first piece, so we got 1 times the second piece, that's right here, that's the bottom piece, minus the top piece, times the derivative of the second piece, so everything looks good there, all over the second piece squared. I'm glad I caught that mistake. And then I just I rewrote the first piece here, so nothing happened here, and then I put the 2 in the front, that's here, 
And then s minus 2 times s minus 2 is s minus 2 squared. I guess we could leave it like this. I mean, it might be better to factor out uh, an s minus 2. I'm not sure if it's going to make much of a difference. Um, you could probably break this up. You'll notice this piece here is the same as this piece here. Um, I, I, I think we should just, oh, wait a minute. This does simplify. Look, 1 s minus 2 squared minus 2 s minus 2 squared. This is negative s minus 2 squared. Just realize that, plus 25. All right. And then parentheses, parentheses, s minus 2 squared plus 25 quantity squared. Yeah, I haven't done this problem, so I'm figuring it out as I go. So yeah, these are common terms here. Didn't even realize that. So you can subtract them and get negative 1, right? Because 1 minus 2 is negative 1. All right, we're, we're pretty much done. So to finish, we can use our formula, right? So we have the Laplace. And the original question was t. Let me go back up and show you. Let's see. So t to the 1. So t to the 1 e to the 2t cosine 5t. And that was equal to, well, here n is 1, so it's just negative 1 to the 1 times, and then this derivative here, which is the first derivative, which we just worked out. So this monstrosity, so I'm going to squeeze it in here in brackets. So negative s minus 2 squared plus 25, all over parentheses, parentheses, s minus 2 squared plus 25 parentheses squared bracket. And I guess to, to be pro, we could distribute the negative. When we do that, the sign in the numerator changes. So it would be um, s minus 2 quantity squared, right, distributing the negative 1, minus 25 over, and then the bottom is unchanged. I'm going to use a bracket for the bottom just because it looks better. Probably should have done that from the beginning. and. Sometimes when you use brackets, it adds clarity. Like if I would have used a bracket here, I probably wouldn't have forgotten to. And that's it. That's the final answer. So the, the main thing in this problem is that whenever you have a t next to something you can take the Laplace of, uh, this is a good route to take. I hope this has been helpful.